If you spent any amount of time online, you've no doubt heard literally every tech YouTuber ever talk about how backups are an absolute necessity and that you should have three different versions of the backups in two places and different storage medias and all this stuff, right? You know, they have a saying and they've put it on t-shirts and they've all, all this stuff, right? They, like they've Everybody and their brother has emphasized the importance of backups and for good reason. If you lose your family photos, you're going to be pretty sad about it and you may not have a way of getting those back if you don't have a reasonable backup solution in place. So everyone should have a backup and... The problem with all of that is that I don't follow my own advice all that well. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have backups, but my backups are a mess. And my strategy has been not good for the last part of the, the best part of th three years. My strategy just has not been great. I've been using rsync to back up my main PC to external drives. And I've been using Borg to back up to the cloud very small parts of my stuff to the cloud, I should say. And the situation just isn't great, mostly because of rsync. Now, rsync isn't bad. It's actually very, very good. But it requires some effort to maintain in terms of having your backups actually not be a mess. It also requires some knowledge of what flags you're supposed to use and how to manage what's actually being backed up and to where, all this stuff. And it Turns out that despite knowing all of that, I'm not very good at using rsync. My backup situation when it comes to the stuff that's on my main PC has been a mess now for at least three years. It's basically a, just a giant blob of backup data that I would have a really difficult time knowing what is there and when it was put there. And it's not a great situation. Multiple times over the course of the last couple of years, I've had to reinstall my distro on my main PC, and I go to my backups, and I find that despite the fact that I'd done a backup before I hopped, rsync hadn't actually put a new version of, say, my, my uh, NeoVim configs into the backup. It just left what was there there. Now, that's an, a me problem. That means I wasn't using rsync correctly, but... The, the end outcome was the same. I had lost that data. I had no way of getting it back. And beyond that, because I've been using rsync to basically back up to one direct directory for three years, there's a bunch of nonsense in there that has been there for three years that I don't need. Like, I have ISOs of Ubuntu, uh, like many of them, <laughs> like a whole bunch of them. I have ISOs for every distro that I've ever tried stored in a directory in that backup that I obviously don't need anymore. So things like that that are just there, I don't need a backup of those things. So I've been working towards a better backup solution. Now, I've started thinking about this because I got into the home lab stuff, and I most of the stuff that's there is big. Like, the all the YouTube videos that I've ever made and the podcast and stuff, all that stuff is there. I, I have a, a few terabytes of TV shows and, and uh, movies and stuff like that and a whole bunch of music. And none of that stuff is backed up at all. Now, I do have extra copies of some of it on other hard drives that I've kind of moved away from over the years. And those could theoretically be used as backups, but they're not actually backups because none of them are up to date. So I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to go about backing up that data and making it so that the data that's on my, this main PC is also backed up really well and is kept better organized. And I can kind of keep track of stuff, right? And... I wanted to try to use rsync, but even after using it for a couple of years, I still feel like I don't know nearly enough about how to use it. And I'm, I'm a little worried now that if I do use it, I'll just end up with a gigantic mess of stuff again in three years. And I don't want to be in that situation. So I've devised a plan that w is in two parts. First, I'm going to be using Borg to back up this PC both to the cloud and to the home lab. I can do both very, very easily. It's just basically a technology that allows you to create backups of data and then compress it so that it doesn't take up nearly as much space, encrypt it so that it can you know be secure, and then you can it just transfers all of that data 
over SSH either to the cloud or to a local hard drive. In this case, I'm transferring it to my home lab and to the cloud. And basically what Borg allows you to do with certain tools is it allows me to have my entire home directory with version syncing all set up to both places and will also allow me to, if I were to lose something or I needed to restore something, I can actually mount a specific backup to a directory on my computer and then transfer small amounts of data from that backup or the whole kit and caboodle. So that's really nice. Now, I have used Borg in the past to back up some data from both this and an external hard drive to the cloud. It works fairly well. I use a tool called Vorta, which is a front end for Borg, and it basically sets it up mostly up for you. And you just, I just back the stuff up, right? But I've never used it locally until now, and it works fairly well. Now, you guys are going to see some B-roll here in a minute of me actually performing a backup to my home lab. And, well, well, yes, it does require the terminal. Now, I could set this up with Vorta if I wanted to. I just use Vorta for the cloud. I use the terminal tools for the local backup. But overall, it's very, very simple. It will allow me to create versioned backups and it will make it sure that everything is compressed so that it doesn't take up nearly as much space on the hard drive, which means I can have more backups over a longer period of time. So if I need to go back to a file from, say, six months ago, I'll probably have a backup from then that I can go back to and grab whatever I need, which is really nice. So that's my solution for the main computer. And I, I think that that's a good solution for me. It wasn't the only solution. There are other things that I could have tried. Uh, I thought about, again, using rsync again. I've, I thought about just cloning the entire hard drive as well with something like Deja Dupe or something like that. I think that's a tool that's used for that. I thought about that but didn't want to do that as well. So I just try, I, I've just i decided I'm bored for now. It seems to, to work really, really well. The problem, of course, is that it doesn't really help with the home lab. Now... Some of it will be able to be be used with Borg. So things like my Docker containers and stuff like that, I can actually send up into the cloud or back up to this PC or another hard drive or whatever. That won't be hard because none of those are big in terms of storage. The big stuff, though, I don't know what I'm going to do quite yet. And it's this waffling thing that I'm doing when it comes to this decision that you know worries me a bit because I want to back up that stuff, but... I'm also not quite sure how or, or where or, how, you know, how to go about it. And the options that I've basically boiled down to are to use Borg for all of it. Now, this would simplify things instead of using two different tools. And I don't mind paying for the storage because there's a service called Borg Base that's an online storage tool. And I can get like four terabytes or five terabytes or something like that for like 150 bucks a year. It's not that expensive. And that would back up, that would back up basically everything that I have at the moment. It went for a long while because I'm as I make more YouTube videos that more of my data is, is big and I don't really even really need to back up my YouTube videos so maybe I won't even do that. I don't even know. But the point is is that I've thought about Borg but it's not really necessarily meant for large storage. Now it, it it can be used as such, but it seems for for me and my purposes, it works better for a more you know compact subset of data than everything. That's just the way that it feels for me. Now, maybe other people use it better for large sets of data. I don't know. Uh, for me, just this is the way that it feels better for me to use it. So I've also looked into something called R-Clone. Now, R-Clone is similar, only instead of backing up to Borg and using Borg as the backup method, it uses... Basically, what I'm assuming is a version of rsync to transfer data from one place to another, and it supports online services like AWS and Backblaze and things like that. Now, I'm not sure that's the direction I want to go, but it's probably the direction that I will go. I'm a little worried about cost. Now, I hear that you can back up terabytes upon terabytes of data to like the Glacier service of, for AWS for very, very cheap. So it's probably actually cheaper than Borg, but I don't like the fact that it is determined by the amount of data that I have that I can't just go buy this amount. And if I hit that amount, it stops taking data, it, but instead it would actually just charge me more. So I, I don't know. It, it, it's probably not a big deal because it's super, super cheap, but it's something that my irrational brain thinks about. But also, I'm not sure. I, I've heard 
horror stories of having to restore from glacier and it actually moves like a glacier it's like really really slow to restore from so i'm not sure what the solution there is i don't know much about that part of my backup strategy yet that's what i'm trying to say is that i haven't made that choice yet and the reason why i'm rambling about all this is just because i like to ramble and i'm talking to you guys about my journey and experience with these things and maybe that'll point you into the right direction for your backup strategy and I, I think that when it comes to the whole backup strategy thing, it's important for you to take an audit of your situation fairly frequently. And I think about this quite a bit. I want to make sure that all my data is safe, secure, and backed up. I'm not good at it or haven't been good at it up, to, up till now. I want to be good at it, so I've been working on this whole strategy that I've been talking about now for a good 10 minutes. And I think over, you know, as time goes on, as my strategy evolves, I think it'll become more and more complex. And it's more important as that happens for me to kind of take a, an audit of what's going on. Is everything that I'm doing working well for me? Is it easy to restore from? Do I have easy access to those backups if I need them? Is it in places where I can actually feel safe and secure that that data is, you know, going to actually be there when I need it. Like I'm not going to, if I choose some random company online that you've, ne that I've never heard of, are they going to go out of business before I, you know, stop paying them money? You know, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into this. And I think that from your guys' perspective, it's also important to kind of think about where your data's at, how you are working on backing all of your stuff up and ensuring not only that you can back things up, but also that you can easily restore stuff. Because if you can't restore from your backup, your backup's worthless. So these are the things that I've been thinking about lately. I've just, because I am a little bit worried about the cheap mechanical hard drives that I bought for my home lab, and the fact that they're connected via USB, which is notoriously, you know, fuzzy when it comes to to you know actual stability and stuff so I, i've been worrying about it more and more and i've talked about it on the podcast a little bit and i've talked about it in a blog post or in a patron pod or something and overall it's just one of those things where i constantly think about it and i think that you guys should too now most of this was just for me to give the usual psa that you need your backups but also there are tools out there that you guys can look into that will help you with this process. So things like Borg and their front ends with like Vorta or Pika, those things will work with Borg really, really well. Things like Rclone for larger sets of data. Things like TimeShift, if you're going to use uh, rsync, you can use TimeShift as like a, a, a GUI front end. If you use ButterFS, you can do something like ButterFS send and receive. That, that's basically the met method of taking your entire home directory and transferring it over via a snapshot to another ButterFS drive. Now, it's that second bit, which is why I don't actually use ButterFS for my backups, because you can't, as far as I'm aware, store a ButterFS backup snapshot onto a drive that isn't also ButterFS. And none of my backup drives are ButterFS. Also, it wouldn't work very, very well for the cloud, because you don't know what file system those things are using, so you kind of have to, you know, it just wouldn't work. So. Despite my eternal love of ButterFS, ButterFS send and receive aren't something that I can use. So I've kind of focused my attentions elsewhere. But the point here is that you may find yourself feeling like you're trapped to a certain tool or doing things in a certain way. And if it doesn't work well for you, you're probably not going to do your backups. And you definitely need to do your backups. So what you should do is go through and making make sure that your system of doing a backup is as easy as possible. And obviously, you'll also want to make sure that it's as automated as possible. Because even if it is easy and you even enjoy the process, chances are you'll eventually fall out of the habit of doing it manually. So by automating it 100%, you then ensure you always have a backup. And that's another thing that I haven't done yet. Everything that I've talked about, specifically when it comes to the Borg stuff, is all still manual for me. I have to go through and run the command in the terminal in order for it to do it. Now, I do have Vorta set up uh, to back up some of that data to the cloud automatically at like 3 o'clock in the morning. But 
my computer's not often on very much at three o'clock in the morning so uh, sometimes it has to do it later in the in the day or whatever um it does do that which is nice but it's still something that i kind of have to think about sometimes i go in there and just do it manually anyway so automation is obviously your friend but again don't feel tied to the tool that you're using if it doesn't work well for you find something different I guess that's kind of the whole point of the video is if you are having issues when it comes to the tools that you're using for your backups, there are other tools out there and other options for you. So definitely give those some researching. If you are interested in me making a video about some of those tools, more specifically things like Borg and Vorta and Pika, leave a comment in the comment section below or a thumbs up on this video or even both. That would be kind of awesome. So thank you so very much for watching. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi and on YouTube. Those links will also be down there in the video description below. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I know I do have some new patrons that I haven't got up here on the screen quite yet. I'll get that done in the next couple of days. Uh, so I'm back caught up again as usual. So thank you guys so very much for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.